Hey there, press the bell icon and never miss a video on cyber security and technology. Hello everyone, this is Anshu from Bitten Tech and in this video we are going to talk about firmware. We are going to discuss some basic introduction to firmware. What is firmware? Why it is used? And what is its importance, its significance? And uh, if you can change your firmware or not? So that's all in this video. We are going to discuss all these things. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Firmware sounds similar to software, right? It is a software, but it's actually not a software. You can say it's a software, but it is a modified form of software. It is a software to perform a particular task from hardware. It is not only present on your computer, your mobile, your tablet, your laptop, but it is present on every engineering product or any consumer appliance or any computer peripheral. Yes, a firmware is not only present on your computer, though it is similar to a software, but it is a modified form of software. It is used to control, manage and monitor the data of various engineering products and appliances. Now take an example of washing machine. Washing machine has a firmware pre-embedded in it or you can say it has a pre-programmed or a pre-installed firmware. Now how a washing machine works? You set the timer, you set the type of wash you want and you just put your clothes and all the other work is done by washing machine. Have you ever wondered how it works? It is just because of the firmware embedded in the washing machine. When you set the counter of the washing machine, you must have heard a small very slow tick tick sound which is coming from the counter, from the dial of the washing machine. It is just the sound of the counter which is coming back to its original position. Even if the washing machine is not on, the counter even works when it is switched off. It is just because of the firmware. You program it, you tell the counter to count up to this and the counter does that. How it does? Who has the brain to understand the task and do the task for us? It is just because of the firmware available there. Similarly, when you set the clock time, when you set the type of wash, when you set the intensity of wash, the amount of water used, the cloths, the type of cloths you put in, everything which you store in the washing machine, everything which is processed, it is done by the firmware of the washing machine. And you call something which you run on your computer, that's a software. But to differentiate it from these uh, hardware related softwares, we use the term firmwares. Take an example of TV remote. TV remote also has a firmware. It is inside the buttons of the remote. When you press a button, how will the remote, how will the TV understand what button you pressed? You press the on button, the TV gets on. You press the volume up button, the volume goes up. How it's done? There's not something which is sitting inside the remote. It is because of the circuitry inside it. That circuitry has a pre-embedded, pre-programmed firmware. Just like a software, firmware is also a code. It is also a code like a software, but it has some codes which are not similar to the codes we write in software. We use programming languages, right? We use some languages which are high level. We write a software in our language, in a high level language, but firmware is written in low level language. It is written in the language which the hardware can understand, not we people. We are writing firmware for the hardware. We are not writing it for ourselves. We can also say that it is written in assembly language. It also takes some input from the user. It processes that input. It decides what type of task is done according to the input and according to the type of device and renders a desired output. And that output may be anything. It can be any type of output. It may be a thermal output. It may be an electromagnetical output. And it also can be a kinetic output. 
it will just depend on the type of appliance you are using like in the case of a microwave they are also a firmware embedded inside it when you put some food you program the microwave you set the buttons you set the temperature and after some times the microwave automatically stops when the time is over who tells it to stop the firmware the firmware inside it and it is a type of output which is thermal heat is produced inside the microwave so it is a type of thermal output which is produced by the firmware of the microwave now when we talk about computer systems firmware is present in non volatile memory of the system it is present in hard drive rom flash drive in every mobile you use you have a firmware particular firmware now there are two types of questions here is your firmware updatable or not can firmwares be updated it is a very common question i hear nowadays the answer is sometimes it can be and sometimes it cannot it will depend on the device it will depend on the type of device it is embedded in like the firmware of your mobile phone can be updated or may not be updated it will depend on the model of your phone some phones can be easily updated but some phones are not that easy to be updated by the firmware of your phone i mean the rom the stock rom of your phone if you are using motorola phones there is a high possibility that you will have a stock firmware a stock rom but if you are using phones of xiaomi or samsung they may have their own customized firmware so they can be updated they can be changed to some other firmware the firmware of flash drives hard disk drives or any appliance you use are not updatable once they are installed they can't be changed they require some special hardware changes to update them and that will not be relevant enough this type of firmware which cannot be updated is called a internal firmware for example if you want to change the firmware of your tv remote you cannot just change it you have to change the entire circuitry of the inside of the remote the whole board the whole hardware needs to be changed and that isn't relevant you can buy a new remote instead of that what's the use of changing the board again it will cost the same price so to summarize firmware is present in every electronic appliance or consumer product or engineering product you use you tell your remote by pressing a button to send the infrared rays to the tv receiver to produce a desired output depending upon the button you pressed in similar way some devices send microwaves some send infrared rays some send radio waves depending upon the input and that is done by the firmware everything which you are able to do from any of the appliance you use it is just because of the firmware inside it and there is no hardware which can work without the firmware there is some logic behind making hardware and that logic is the firmware so firmware is a special type of software which is present on every device you use which takes the input tells the hardware to do a task and the hardware does the task it has pre programmed codes defining all the type of inputs it may be thermal input it may be electromagnetic magnetic input it may be solar input any type of input and remember this no electrical or electronical device or appliance can work without a firmware even if it has lots and lots of hardware inside it so that's all in this video i hope you liked it if you have any suggestions or queries do let me know in the comment section and please don't forget to like share and subscribe for more information on technology cyber security and ethical hacking so until my next video stay tuned keep watching goodbye